The Boy and the Heron has been on quite a tear lately. Not only is it the first anime to top the North American box office, but it's also the first anime to win a Golden Globe, and it seems like this gravy train is not slowing down. Now, I remember watching The Boy and the Heron on opening weekend in the theaters, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. Yes, it's weird, and yes, it's convoluted, but it is by far and away one of the best things I've seen in 2023, and I think it's one of the best anime that Ghibli's ever produced. There's also a good chance that this anime is going to win an Academy Award, which if you would have told me a year ago that any anime would have had a shot to win another Academy Award, I'd laugh all the way to the bank because I could guarantee you I thought we'd never see something like this again. But here we are, and it seems like the boy in the heron is in prime position to do so. In fact, I'm betting on it. So I'm going to give you three reasons why the boy in the heron is going to win an Academy Award. The Golden Globes is a bellwether for these sort of things. There are plenty of movies that go on to win a Golden Globe and an Oscar. And while it's not always true, there's really a good chance that The Boy and the Heron will be able to do it here. And it's really because of the competition. We look at some of the movies that The Boy and the Heron faced at the Golden Globes, and many of these films will probably be in contention at the Oscars. And look, there's really no contest. Let's look at the Super Mario Brothers movie, which is a great movie. It's one of the highest grossing films of all time, and Nintendo has had a heck of a year. It is very fun, it's so funny, but is there any real story to it? Not really. There's plenty of IP and just brand management that they're putting in for show, and that's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but is this gonna stack up against something as sophisticated as The Boy and the Heron? No. 10 times out of 10, it's not winning. Now let's look at Elemental and Wish. The Disney and Pixar films are usually shoe-ins for winning these sorts of awards because they've been doing it pretty routinely for the past 20 years. But this year seems to be a bit different because while both of these films are very gorgeous to look at, they don't really have substance. And I think the biggest problem is that People weren't really applauding at the same level for Elemental or The Wish as they've done for something like your Big Hero 6s and The Incredibles. It's not working this time around. And I think if you compare any of those movies to The Boy and the Heron, it's not going to stand a chance. Suzume. Now, I did see Suzume and I loved this film. It was very beautiful. Makoto Shinkai is one of the goats when it comes to anime filmmaking. There's no doubt about it. Teenage girl trying to save the world. It's always, always respected. But I think the problem here is that, is it really better than The Boy and the Heron? I mean, you can make an argument for it, but personally, I think what The Boy and the Heron does so well is just adding Miyazaki's touch is always going to stand out against anybody else. I mean, this guy was inspired to get into filmmaking because of Ghibli and Miyazaki personally. And I just don't see Suzume stacking up to beat The Boy and the Heron. I just don't. And then we look at Across the Spider-Verse, which probably has the best shot of beating The Boy and the Heron, I would say. But the problem with this film is that it's incomplete. This two-part film is not something that you can really arguably stack up against something as complete as The Boy and the Heron. Next year, will it win for Beyond the Spider-Verse? Absolutely, I guarantee it. But for Across the Spider-Verse, having half a story is not enough. The second reason is that, look, the Oscars love a good story that's somewhat based in reality. And The Boy and the Heron is a semi-autobiographical work. It's based on the life of Hayao Miyazaki himself. And while, yeah, we don't see, you know, magical herons and things like that, no. But it is based on his mother and just how the war affected his life. The Oscars love to give a reason for seeing really the true beauty of how a person lives in their art forms. We look at something like Argo, we can look at something like 
Jamie Foxx, how he portrayed Ray Charles. And we can even look at Steven Spielberg's The Fablemans. I think The Boy and the Heron does a real good job. Probably one of the first animated films to actually do that very effectively. Third is the promotional strategy. And look, I think it is a genius idea for Ghibli to not promote it because that in turn gave them all the promotion they need. And there's a reason why it was so successful in Japan. It's one of the highest grossing films in Japan in 2023. And obviously it really raked it in here in North America as well. It's because people are always intrigued by what they don't know. And we didn't know a lot coming into this. I know personally, I didn't look anything up about this film, even though they did have some trailers uh, in North America leading up to it. I didn't want to see it out of respect for the fact that Miyazaki did not want to have it for his viewers in Japan. So I did the same and I was genuinely amazed at what I saw. And I think a lot of people who were intrigued to see what this movie is going to be about, whether they seen anime or not, were really amazed as well. And I think that really opened a lot of eyes to people and I think the Oscars the people voting there are going to feel the same way when it comes to it and just really respect what Miyazaki has done when it comes to animation and creating a really good story. What's funny is that the promotional strategy is vastly different from how Hayao Miyazaki won his first and only Oscar at this point with Spirited Away back in 2003. And a lot of it was because of the push of John Lasseter. Now, I did do a video on Spirited Away if you want to check it out. If this does come to fruition, it's going to be the complete opposite <laughs> of strategy of promotion. And one that's probably very, very unlikely in a lot of other ways to win. And look, I think the biggest thing too is that many people are talking about this film, The Boy and the Heron, to be Miyazaki's final film. And while I don't think that's the case, I feel God willing, he will be able to finish another one. I think the fact that they are promoting it as his final film is a reason why the Oscars are going to really try to give this one to him. Because for the longest time, he's always been in contention and he's always been such a great animator and just a great storyteller. There's been some close calls where he probably could have won other Oscars. I think given the perfect send off to him, if this is his final film, would be to get him to win an Oscar for this film. So I think that's a really big part in the thought process of maybe many of those Oscar voters. Now it's really a long time coming for Otakus who really wanted to see another anime win since Spirited Away because like I mentioned, Studio Ghibli and anime in general have had plenty of chances to win an Oscar. They've been nominated all throughout the 2010s and while none of them really won, I feel like some of them probably should have won, but they did lose at the hands of many Pixar and Disney films. Personally, Princess Kaguya should have probably won one in my opinion, but regardless, I never thought an anime would have the chops to actually pull this off, but I think we're closer than we've ever been before. Hand-drawn animation is just a lost art nowadays. With like 90% of films done with some sort of CGI, Studio Ghibli is one of the last studios to hand draw everything. And the fact that this isn't respected enough is really a travesty. But I think the Oscars could really right the ship here and give Hayao Miyazaki one more win at the Oscars. And one for a movie that is so weird and so strange, but 100% brilliant.